Hello, and welcome to the 50th episode of Glam Bia's Dairy Focus. First, I would like to draw your attention to the next Dairy Focus Life event that we're hosting next week on the topic of TBC and thermodurics and how they impact your milk quality. And you will hear from national experts on what to do to prevent, but also to correct thermodurics issues when they arise in your herd. So keep an eye out for notifications with a link on how to access the event so you can interact with these experts and ask questions that concern your herd. In this episode, we have TJ Phelan with some great insights on replenishing nutrients on silage ground. After that, we hear from Phil Meany on the steps to take to prepare for the autumn reseeding. Hi, so today I want to discuss with you some tiny tips around replacing nutrients where we take out surplus grass and where we have made round bales of silage. It's important that we are replacing these nutrients and not depleting our soil's fertility. Typically, a bale of silage will remove about 1.6 units of phosphorus and about 10 units of potash. So if we're taking off 4 to 5 bales per acre, we are generally removing about 6 to 8 units of phosphorus and about 50 units of potash. As a rule of thumb, typically 50 units of potash is enough to reduce a soil index from 3 to 2. So where we are taking these bales off, we will see our soil's fertility reduce if we are not replacing those nutrients. We should be targeting slurry applications to these fields where we are taking our bales off as it's ideally suited to replace any nutrients that have been taken off. And 2,000 gallons should be enough to support about 4 to 5 bales per acre. Where we don't have slurry available, we should be using a suitable compound to replace these nutrients. Where we see soil analysis coming back for the grazing platform, typically where there has been a number of bales made over the growing season, these paddocks can often come back at a low index for P and for K. So it's really important that we are not forgetting about these fields and replacing the nutrients that we have taken off. Lastly, in relation to storage of brown bales, where bales are stored on a hard surface or in a yard over the winter months, these need to be collected the same as a silage pit and all effluent needs to be stored and collected. If bales are stored in a field or away from the yard, it's really important to remember that these bales need to be stored at least 20 metres away from any water body or water course, and under cross compliance this is a requirement. When we're talking about a spring reseed or an autumn reseed, I suppose there's three main points to keep in mind. One is a pre-reseed, the other one is the reseed methods, and the third one then is the post-emergence and how we deal with that. And we'll just quickly run through, through those. I suppose what we're looking at once you've identified the paddock is to, um, to spray it off. That's, that's, that's essential really. Um, what we're talking about is, is, is 2200 grams of glyphosate. So whether that's whatever product you, you're using to try and come to that figure. Um, per, per hectare. Ideally leave it five days, cut it for silage, leave it another five days and come in and sow it. Um, there's loads of methods of, of receding, whether you plough or disc or t whatever, whatever way you're doing. The most important thing is seed soil contact and that is absolutely essential. So really what you're looking at is a 60 day turnaround from grazing to grazing. Um, so what we're, what we're doing then is, is as soon as you can pull that uh, new seed. If it pulls out of the ground it's not fit for grazing, if, it's, if you can pull it and it breaks off it's fit for grazing and that's as simple as that so it's a very early stage. The, the, the third section and, and, and often forgotten about section is the post reseeding spray. Okay so what you're looking at um, ideally once you have clover in it you obviously try to look after that clover and DB plus is we got a label this year to use DB plus um, and that's what we would, would, would suggest using. Um, there's loads of other chemicals there that, that will do a great job, will, will affect your clover. It's a heavy spray, but you, it's a heavy rate, but you need to get in early. And, I, and I'd be suggesting somewhere between four weeks, once before the weeds are too strong. Once you have a dock leaf the size of, a, a, of your thumb, uh, you go in and spray. So earlier than we'd probably used to, um, and get in and graze it. And I suppose the whole thing is don't leave reseeding too late. Once you go in past uh, the middle of September at all, you, you're, 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 you need weather on your, on, on your side. Now if you want any more information on any of the topics covered in this episode, please talk to your local Glambia representative or log on to glambiaconnect.com, which is also where you can find any of the previous episodes of Dairy Focus, or you can go on to our YouTube channel and you will find the Glambia's Dairy Focus playlist there where you can watch all 50 episodes. Thank you for watching.